Aloha, and welcome to the latest edition of Telehealth in Hawaii. I'm your host, Vikram Acharya. I'm the CEO of Cloudwell Health, an all virtual telemedicine provider based in Hawaii. We have a great show for you today. I'm very excited. I'm honored to introduce a high ranking healthcare executive, Annalyn Ogata. Annalyn is the regional vice president at Covenant Physician Partners. Annalyn, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Vic. It's really a, an honor to do a podcast with you. This is actually my first one. So, oh, um, exciting. Oh, very exciting. Excellent, excellent. To kick things off, Anna Lynn, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from, uh, your role at Covenant Physician Partners, and we'll go from there. All right. Well, everyone, hello. Aloha. Um, I'm Annalyn Ogata. Um, I am the Regional Vice President for Covenant Physician Partners. I was born in Florida, but um, from San Diego. I was a military uh, kid, so we traveled uh, in a, quite a few states, but mainly in California and um, Hawaii. Uh, I'm a nurse by trade, and um, what had happened is I joined the military when I was um, in college, after college in, in California and became, you know, I was a nurse, an, an army nurse. And then from there, you know, change MOSs, which is changing fields to become a non, a non-destructive inspector. So a plain doctor, but decided that I didn't want to do that anymore because I realized all of the chemicals that actually uh, affect your hair and your, and your skin. And so I decided just to go back into healthcare. So when I moved here uh, to Hawaii back in 1998, um, I was working as an agency nurse and then I landed a position over at Kapiolan Medical Center. And at the time it was only a hospital, it wasn't a health system. Um, and so I was asked to build a, a women's cancer center not knowing much about how to build anything, but I took on the challenge and built the women's cancer center over at Kapiolani. And then from there, you know, just my, my career took off in regards to continue to build things on this island. And so that's including um, cancer centers at the different locations or different systems. Um, so I also worked um, at Queens Medical Center and I was a director of oncology there for about eight years, uh, ran their oncology program inpatient and outpatient. Uh, built a few centers out there, which are the Head and Neck Institute, the uh, GI colon screening program. So a lot of things that's going to benefit the community here in Hawaii, as we know, it's healthcare is um, is difficult here in Hawaii, and that's because we're challenged with some of the specialties that's needed here. So I decided just to stay in healthcare and got recruited by Covenant to to definitely uh, work as a regional vice president and making sure that uh, we have uh, services accessible to, to, to our community. That's, that's a really impressive background. Now, what's interesting is you made the transition from being a nurse, really being at the front lines, at the bedside, taking care of patients, to, to the executive role. Uh, what brought you to the executive role and What's the, day, what's the day in the life in terms of the changes there? Wow, that's a loaded question because, you know, coming from a nursing background, working on the floor, you know, uh, doing clinical work is definitely, it, it was a steep learning curve for me to go from there to actually into a management position. Um, but I took the challenge. I, I like challenges and things that I know that I can overcome. I'm somewhat of an overachiever. And so whenever someone has asked me to, to go into a new role, um, I wasn't shy about trying it and, and, ch and challenging myself to see how I can grow and develop personally. Um, but definitely a hard transition, uh, but some of the challenges that we have here in Hawaii, especially post COVID is, you know, there's five things that I could think of. And one is the rising cost of healthcare. Uh, two is recruiting top nursing talent. Three is managing um, Medicare and Medicaid patients. And then of course, you know, expanding telehealth and telemedicine was something we were pretty much forced to do during COVID. And then um, 
The other challenge is cybersecurity. So those are the top five things that I believe is the challenges for any business or any bus uh, healthcare, you know, um, CEO or administrator. Now, this is a good uh, topic to delve into in further detail. So during the height of the pandemic, staffing was a challenge in healthcare facilities, access to supplies to make sure that providers are safe. Uh, how did you and Covenant really respond to this challenge with providing your teams what they needed and when they needed it? Well, honestly, it was all the hard work of my managers. Uh, they were definitely the key component to making sure that um, our staff were protected, our physicians were protected, and my team, my, my, my employees were protected. So, you know, they, we pretty much got together like on a weekly, sometimes even a daily basis. And that includes um, all my doctors or at least the board to really just dis uh, to discuss how we were going to continue. And so it was hard because we had to lay off, you know, some of our employees during that time. We had to shut down in April and part of May. And so when we did that, uh, that gave us an opportunity to really try to uh follow the guidelines that were in place from the CDC and the state. And so really the, the people that I owe it to is my managers and my physicians who are pretty much the foundation of, of my, our business. So my role seems pretty easy because I just get to directive. And then of course, I'm the one that says, this is the goal, what are we gonna do? And then my team's pretty much boots on the ground. But it was challenging too with uh, staffing. So um, yeah. one of my centers did a you know split staffing. So making sure that not everyone would be there. So we split it between like an A team and a B team, and they would rotate because if we've sent all of them there, then there is a high risk of them getting one person getting COVID, and then I would not have anyone to really uh, fulfill the needs of our community during that time. Um, and the, especially in Hilo, Hilo is another uh, uh, component that, you know, one center, only staff of eight people there. So if one person contracted uh, COVID, then it would be a, it would be a, a huge impact on, on our financial um, statements. Now, that's, that's really interesting how you touched on the topic of empowering your managers, you know providing them with the resources they need to be successful. And that's a very important trait when it comes to leadership, isn't it? Giving people the tools and really letting them do what they do best. And I think that was also the reason how I got into management because I had leaders that empowered me to uh, you know, provide the skill sets that I had from whether it was nursing or um, the military. And so they gave me the autonomy to go ahead and, and you know, do things. And here at Covenant, as, as the regional vice presidents, I have the independence and autonomy to, you know, make, just, just make the decisions that's um, the best for, for the community, for my team. And, and of course, with the input of my board and my managers, it, it, it makes it very seamless. Now, you're a, a regional vice president. You represent a very nuanced region um, as Covenant Physician Partners, a national company. How do you bridge, so to speak, you know, your region with oh. the mainland United States? That, that's a very interesting, yeah, that's, that's a very that's, interesting aspect. That's, a, that's a, actually a fun topic for me because the one thing uh, here in Hawaii is we're big on our culture. You know, everything's aloha. And, you know, it's hard uh, for people from the mainland or business from the mainland to come here and try to start a business. It's very, very fortunate that Covenant really set the landmark here. And so really trying to bridge the gap between the corporate in the mainland versus the corporate locally is pretty much teaching them about our culture here in Hawaii. It's not as easy as, you know, if you were to do something in California or Florida. And I would say Hawaii is a very hard market, especially to even tap in to even make a business or uh, start a business. So the first thing you really want to do is be able to educate and, and you know, teach them the cultures in here, Hawaii. You know, as I, I, I noticed you're wearing an Aloha shirt, right? 
And so that's what we would expect, you know, our visitors to wear because some of them will come in a suit and tie, which already, uh, you know, it's a radar for say, okay, that's a person from the mainland. And, and I don't think of, I don't think many people wear suits and ties here, but I do know that um, I have a front desk at EIH that does wear a tie. I believe his name is Noel. So I'm giving a shout out to Cammie and her team. And then I have Dr. Ronald Pang, shout out to Inez, that wears a bow tie or a tie as well. But really teaching, um, teaching the mainland folks to come in and respecting the culture is very important. And, and the other thing is the way you speak. So you can't be as aggressive or assertive because in Hawaii, we're very passive aggressive. We'll, we will smile, we will welcome you, we'll welcome you with gifts and lays and cookies and candies. But when it comes down to signing or, or collaborating or partnering, then, you know, sometimes there's questionable about the trust, you know? So that's, it's challenging here. So you're uh, leading the region, but you're also providing a lot of education, you know, to the to the to the team nationally. That's that's very interesting. Well, yeah, and on top of that, we here in Hawaii, you know, we have different zip codes, different area codes, uh, and so you have to know that patient population. You know, you have it. We span from all the way from Waianae to Waimanalo. Um, and then, of course, you have like Kahala, and then you have Waipahu, Pearl City. So you really have to know your, your, your people. And, and something that we've learned in the book Execution by Larry Bossidy, you know, is three things. Know your people, know your operations, and know your processes. And so that's something that really um, is engraved into us is really have your people skills. Know your people. Now, what are some of the techniques and processes, you know, Covenant has done just a, an amazing job with access, you know, really opening up access to patients across the entire region. What are some of the things that uh, you and your team have done to really make sure that patients get that really nice, timely access to medical care when they need it? Well, as we know, COVID was a challenge. And so telehealth was, uh, and telemedicine was um, something that gave us that option. And I'm a, I'm a supporter of you know, modern care anywhere. So especially like in, in my world, I'm busy. I don't want to have to drive and take a day out of my day, just or some time out of my day to, to go see a doctor. So it was so easy for me just to basically call Cloudwell, which is you folks who I support. And, and during that time, I, I needed a, a physician, not only for myself, but for my son. And Cloudwell was able to provide that with uh, in, my, in my home safely. Um, and it was pretty easy. And so what we want to be able to do is be able to have our patients, you know, have access to, you know, telehealth or telemedicine with Cloudwell um, and really uh, having your team or Cloudwell's team uh, doing an assessment that questions anything that they need uh, or any referrals that they need to have within their um, health. So I would say that with telemedicine, telehealth, it really has changed the landscape here in Hawaii, but I think it's changed the landscape everywhere. Um, we didn't realize that we could work from home and we could do Zoom meetings like this and we don't have to be in the office. But I believe we've been doing telehealth in GI for uh, similar to GI, you know, similar to what we're doing now. We do, we do open access. And so open access is pretty much you're talking on the phone and you're doing a, a you're doing an assessment on a patient based on the criteria that we provide. So what happens there is our, our nurses actually call patients that meet the criteria and schedule them for a colonoscopy. So their first, their first uh, visit or uh, introduction to a physician is actually the day of their colonoscopy. So sometimes it could be a little uncomfortable because you don't know who's gonna be scoping you or seeing you, but I believe that was a form of telehealth in, in just by phone. And so that I believe uh, was something that was beneficial to us. So telehealth, telemedicine was not anything new, except that we were on a camera and we were able to see each other. There's a lot of literature out there in healthcare around uh, culturally sensitive care, culturally competent care. And I would really think that coming from the region that 
that you and your team manage on a day-to-day basis that you're very adept at being able to connect with patients, be warm with patients, understand the cultural nuances, and ultimately translate that uh, to an ad, to to covenant nationally. Right, and 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 that's because we treat our patients, our physicians like family. That's something that's big in our culture is our family. And so everybody is our auntie or uncle and who you don't know who you're gonna be uh, talking to on the phone or seeing, but a, a lot of times is we really do treat them as part of as part of our team and, and you know our physicians, it's very important that um, they feel you know welcome and that we're providing quality uh, clinical care um, to them in a safe environment, which you know my staff at all location is heavily on, on making sure that our patients are taken care of at the highest quality and, and you know providing safety for them too. So um, hands down to my team for doing that and my physicians, you know, who who do contribute to the to the outcomes of our patients. So yes, our our patient satisfaction scores are are you know really high. Hilo by is probably by far the highest. So and that's a smaller community. I mean, lots of people, but smaller community meaning that you know it's easily um, people talk there. Everyone there is auntie and uncle. The moment you get off the plane, it's auntie and uncle. What are some uh, techniques that have made, especially Hilo, such a such a strong satisfaction uh, marker f- uh, for Covenant? Knowing that, it, like you said, it's a very small community, and one negative experience can impact many others. But you've been able to provide such good customer service, and more and more people keep coming back. Well, I think honestly, it's it's the people. It really is the people. I mean, their neighbors. Um, they they might be. Uh, their daughter or niece or someone might be working in, the, in their restaurant. And so it's really the people. It's like basically um, one big family at different zip codes or different areas of Hilo. But they really, uh, the team in Hilo, like I said, there's only about eight to 13 employees there. And they run a very busy practice in a very busy center with one doctor. So they're busy and they, that's why they, they can't have any mistakes. It's zero tolerance. So we have to not only provide the safety, um, but we need to also provide uh, good customer service. And, and like you said, you know, challenges to providing timely, high quality access to healthcare, it works, especially if people feel they're vested, they're part of an organization that they really care about on a personal level because they're going to go above and beyond the expectation. They're going to make sure that their neighbor or their cousin or their family or their friend really experiences great care at the organization that they work at, I would think. Absolutely, I agree. And so my managers really focus, you know, on their patient quality care. Um, Hawaii definitely uh, ranks um, within the company ranks really high. Um, and everybody knows like Hawaii seems to rank as one of the most healthiest states in the world, which is very true, but we also have a very challenging um, access of care too. And, and that's just because of the way our landscape is, you know, people live on Maui, people live on Kauai and Hilo, but my managers really uh, focus on, on the patient's well-being. And not only that, but their family members, because if you have an elderly patient coming in, you're going to want to uh, understand that you're not only talking to your patient, but you're also talking to a family member. Because a lot of times here in Hawaii, the family member is taking care of their mom or dad. And so that's why I say everybody's family uh, managers are on top of it with uh, customer service and making everyone feel welcome. And, and so that's where I think, you know, our team really drives a uh, good business. Um, and a lot of it's word of mouth here in Hawaii. Uh, we have, um, like you said, one wrong move, everyone's going to hear about it, you know, through the coconut wireless, right? And so it's it's really important that we provide that that care. Now, you are very passionate about your team. You have a great team, you know, especially now with a lot of things moving more to virtual. Uh, what types of team bonding or team engagement? type of activities or initiatives do you 
do you do, you know, to keep everybody so energized and so passionate about taking good care of patients? Well, I meet with my team frequently. Um, some activities that we do, well, we definitely have our, you know, uh, quarterly meetings. Um, every year Covenant, um, well, this is the first time in the three years, uh, has a leadership summit. And in that leadership, leadership summit, Covenant pretty much pays for all the managers across the board, across the nation to come to Nashville and really um, empower us to, to re-motivate us and to keep that flame alive and really finding our purpose. And so I've been doing that from even before Covenant. And so just having that passion and motivation, I mean, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of energy and, I, and I'm pretty much the type of person that wants to, to rub off that to my managers, which they do, they're, they're awesome. Um, I wasn't surprised that Hawaii uh, was pretty much took all the awards when we went there this past month. Um, I was not surprised at all. Um, my team definitely deserves it. Some of the things we've done is like we we have like Pauhana, you know, we'll meet for lunch or dinner. Um, when we were in Nashville, we did some uh, duck bowling. I think that's what it's called, duck pin bowling. So we did things like that. And of course, we we do a lot of different things, even if it's within their, their centers. But this Wednesday or tomorrow, as a matter of fact, we're actually celebrating our team tomorrow for pretty much supporting us and supporting the, the community of tomorrow. So I provide a lot of food. <laughs> so that's that's the key is feeding, feeding uh, my team and making sure that they're appreciated and that they're acknowledged. And that's, again, know your people. Yeah, you're, you're touching on some really great points, leadership points, knowing your people, and then it goes back to happy employees, happy teams lead to happy patients, which then reduces challenges to care, higher quality, higher satisfaction, and really improves the lives of entire communities. Yes, agree. And and hundred um, percent. If if you don't if you don't focus on the needs of your team, you know, it, it could easily, you know, destroy itself. So I believe in, you know, pretty much having my manager's um, succession plan into new roles. Um, that's something I'm big on. It's on education and development. So when I first started Covenant, you know, I pretty much identified who was going to succession plan into these management roles and mentored them pretty much from that day. Um, during that time, they weren't necessarily ready, but, you know, two, two years down the line, they're going on three years now, they're running it, they're running the show and they're running it very well. And so I am a, a, a person who likes to acknowledge my team because it's, I can't do this by myself. There's no way I can do it. Um, and so I believe in the teamwork. I mean, I have Inez who's over at HEC. She was, an, she's a brand new manager. Three months in or less than three months, she had to do accreditation last week, Thursday, Friday. She passed with flying colors, no deficiency. So to me, it's really the team that we have and what we've developed. And so passing on whatever I know to my team so that they can pass it on to their, their team um, is important. And I think, like you said, that's where you get higher quality of care, you get good outcomes, you have a good patient satisfaction score. Um, and then the people here in Hawaii like to talk. And then once they start knowing your name, it's like everybody starts, you know, wants to come to, to where they feel welcome. And knowing that the organization and you're uh, coaching your, your team and you're saying, you know, where do you see yourself three to five years from now? How, how can I help you get there? Those are really great conversations because everybody then feels like, hey, you know, the organization cares about me. And not only in terms of what I do every day, but my future, my, my professional career. And that, that makes them feel even better. Yes, definitely um, having my managers um, coaching their teams 
And that's why we're having a celebration tomorrow because we want to celebrate them. They are pretty much the hardworking people that I know here in Hawaii. And I want to personally thank them um, and my physician. And that's how we keep a happy family is acknowledgement. And recognizing that, hey, you are doing a great job. Look at your patient satisfaction scores. You know, look at your clinical qualities, um, you know, um, data. It's it's excellent. You know, Annalyn, it's, it's, I do many of these podcasts and it's really just nice and to hear not only about your experiences, but also how much credit you're giving to your team. You know, the the managers that are with you, the physicians that are with you, that are part of the organization, you know, as any strong leader is only as good as the people around them. And they're only as successful as the people around them. And it's nice to hear just how much positive feedback that you're providing, you know, as that this, you're all in it together. And because you're doing that, you're doing such great things in terms of taking great care of patients in Hawaii. And we really appreciate this. No, absolutely. Um, my team is the A team, as I wrote, I call them, you know, and even though uh, I'm trying to coach them through their development, they still have the challenging, you know, things of the rising cost of healthcare. Staffing is the big one. It's really hard to um, get top nursing recruitment. Um, and then, of course, you know, when um, telehealth um, has helped with our patient care, um, but we don't have the, we don't have the staff sometimes. And so it becomes challenging. So what we've done is pretty much just cross train everybody and job share everybody. And, and that's what we did in our region is to really help, especially Hilo when I said like they only have a, a minimal um, small staffing, uh, we're able to go over there and help. And so the team that I have now, uh, the reason why I speak so highly of them is because they do the hard work. They do the heavy lifting. So really kudos to, to you and to your team. You know, you're working under very challenging circumstances, but people feel it's very clear that they feel part of something. And because they feel part of something, they go the extra mile for the patient. Right. And it's very clear. And I can't thank you enough for not only being on the show, but just all your insight your leadership insight, executive insight, and focus on team. It's just a really a great session, and thank you. No, thank you for inviting me, and um, hopefully I won't be as um, inefficient with the lights <laughs> turning off during our podcast or trying to figure out how to put the camera on. And so um, it, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Annalyn. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Vic. Take care. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.